I would like to tell you about Lucy McCormick. This is her. In 1930, when she was just 41 years old, Lucy was declared mentally insane, which was a very loosely and undefined term in that time, and sent to the asylum called Morningside in the state of Oregon. And for 90 years, her family had no idea what happened to her. Her descendants in Alaska were never given any information. But this year, we now know what happened. Just 10 months after arriving at Morningside Hospital, she received a hysterectomy. She died as a result of an infection that she contracted from that procedure. She was buried, luckily, in a marked grave in Oregon, where she has been until this year. In September, her remains were brought home to Fairbanks in Alaska, where she was buried next to her husband and her first daughter. Her disinterment and journey home from Fairbanks were filled with ceremony and deep meaning for her family and many family members. Her family tree is extensive. Some of them accompanied Lucy on her final journey to the Yukon River, leaving Fairbanks on September 28th. The riverboats left Fairbanks Thursday morning and spent the night near the Ray River, with the full moon and northern lights, with the reflection off the Yukon River, Carlo added. On Friday morning, boats escorted her on the 70-mile ride on glass-smooth water under clear blue skies. Lucy was well prepared for the journey. Her remains were in a special handmade birch casket made by her great-grandson, Brian Kruger. Granddaughter Kathleen Carlo Kendall contributed her artistic talents to Lucy's final resting place. Her exquisitely designed casket was filled with all the necessities of travel for her transition. Carlo said it was a glorious homecoming for Grandma Lucy. After more than 90 years, she was laid to rest Friday under a tall spruce tree next to her husband and first daughter. They rest on the highest ground overlooking her people in the mighty Yukon River. Quote from her grandson. For those who would like to read more in-depth about this history, I have many resources linked in my newsletter where I talk about Lucy's story and the experience of many lost Alaskans. My father has been also working on this project. And I have a few previous videos where I talk about how he called on the Department of Interior to expand the investigations of boarding schools to include institutions like Morningside, Oregon. The practices that took place at Indian boarding schools in the United States were not isolated. And in many ways, these mental institutions functioned the same way. They took babies and adults. So many families never knew what happened to their loved ones. Please interact with this content and share it. I know it's really hard to listen to. There are very few people who are willing to discuss this history, and we cannot afford to forget about it again.